Welcome back, Stasa23 here, back again with some knife therapy, and uh, today I have a treat for you. This is the Lion Steel Roundhead. I did a first impressions video um, several weeks back or a month back, and one of my complaints that I noticed with this knife that I had, it was just a personal gripe, was I wasn't a huge fan of these wooden scales. And there's really nothing wrong with them. I just personally am not a huge wood guy. I know the wood's the thing that makes it good. But I, I like your more modern uh, materials. And this is a modern traditional. So I really wanted a set of either my Carter or G10 scales made for this. And I had one person in mind that, that just does awesome work on traditionals and modern traditionals. And uh, I'm not sure you may do other knives too. And that is my good buddy Birdvis Knives on Instagram. Spelled B-I-R-D-V-I-S Knives on Instagram. And you can also find him on Facebook. I will leave a link down in the description box below on his Instagram and Facebook. Uh, he, uh, he modifies, customizes, and refurbishes old traditional and modern traditional knives. And... If you're not already following him on Instagram, do yourself a favor and go check out his channel. He has some amazing, amazing uh, modified, modified jobs and uh, refurbished jobs. Like if you have a traditional knife that was handed down to you by your grandpa and it's all busted up, the scales are all broken, or there's something that you just want to change on the knife, or you name it, if there's something you want to do to it, he more than likely can do it, and not only can he do it, he does a just stellar, stellar job. He takes um, a lot of things, that, and one thing that he does a lot of, he takes those old um, uh, Camillus traditionals that were made in the U.S., and I mean, I'm talking like old, old, and he refurbishes them, or he modifies them, and just makes them look like well, they are a custom after he modifies it, but he makes them look like a high-end custom slip joint. So definitely, definitely go give him a, go give him a follow, and I'm going to show you. He made me two sets of scales, and he surprised me. I, I, I gave him some material to work with, and he made me a set out of those, and not only that, he wasn't sure, you know, if I were going to like those, which, come on now, I love all his work, so he made me a pair of G10 and a pair of micarta. So I'm so excited. And without further ado, I'm gonna show you what scales I chose to put on the knife. And I did so because they really, really make this knife pop. And it's a surprise because I'm a huge micarta fan and I decided not to go with the micarta. And I'll tell you why later, but let's check them out. Woo, look at that. Now tell me that doesn't make that knife pop. Now of course, if you're not an orange G10 fan, you might think it's ugly, but you can't deny the quality and craftsmanship that he does on his uh, modifications. So I'm going to give you a quick look at this and a quick rundown. If you, uh, if you like these and you want some made, contact him. Uh, contact him on Instagram or Facebook and he can give you a quote. I didn't want to give any price quotes because I don't know, you know, it, it's all going to depend on the material you use and uh, whether you're supplying material, whether he's going to supply the material. You know, there's all kinds of things, you know, after doing modifications myself, there's all kinds of things that take into, uh, take into play when you're making scales. But one thing that's for sure is you don't have to worry about his quality because it's just up there it's up there with the best and one thing I want to address if you see this right here you know when you kind of look at that it looks like there's a gap in between here and there was it was more so it looked like more of a gap with these and I'm gonna tell you why it has nothing it's no gap whatsoever in there you can't really feel the transition that much but the reason why there's a gap right there if you can see they beveled they beveled that bolster I don't know if I, it's hard to show, but they bevel the bolster down like this. And they do that, and they also did a, a very slight bevel. Let's see if I can show this on this one. This could be really hard to show. They also did a slight bevel going down on this one. And they do that just to make, um, 
just to make things line up a little bit easier so you don't have to be dead on precise when you're cutting them straight across. When you cut them straight across, you got to make sure they're they're made it up perfect because if not, you're going to have you're going to have some gaps over there and it's going to look ugly. So they did that. I mean, they did things intentional like they crowned the spine and of the lock bar, they crowned the back spring, they crowned the um the liners and they do that, you know, I like the way that looked, but they do that so you know, you don't have to meet these dead on perfect, you know, uh, it's almost like a shadow box if you really look at it close, and, you know, I have no problem with that, the, this knife, I think, came in at $125, you, it's boasting uh, Bowler M390 steel, and I've been really enjoying this knife, I still haven't been able to carry it enough to uh, do my full review, but be looking out for that later, um, he does all this by hand. He has no CNC, no jigs. And like I said, speaking from experience, it's a lot of hand work. Anybody that's done knife modification or does knife modification can tell you that they're not doing it to be rich. You're not making a whole lot of money. You're doing it because you love doing it. Or you like, you know, you like modifying knives because I can promise you he put a lot of hard, hard work into this, a lot of sweat. A lot of uh, tedious work, and you don't get a whole lot out of it. You know, if you if you charge them by the hour, you're not making a whole lot of money, uh, unless you're doing like batch work where you're doing a whole bunch of these scales and you're doing say 15 of them at a time, so you can do you know you can make it more efficient. Pop this hole, this hole, go to the next one, pop the hole, pop the hole, and then do them like that. Because other than that, when you're doing say this knife. And say another traditional, you gotta change out your bits and you gotta, you know, on your drill press, you gotta change out your belts, all that stuff each time you change knives. So, you know, that takes time. And if you got a batch, it, it helps you out, save money. So, I'm gonna show you the micarta ones. Y'all let me know what y'all like the most. The main reason why I didn't put the micarta, first of all, because I'm probably gonna change back and forth, I almost thought about doing, he shipped it to me with one of the micarta ones on here and one of these on here, and I'll show you what that looks like real quick. Here's the OD green linen micarta that I'd sent him. So there you go. That looks beautiful as well. And like I said, I love micarta, so it, it'll probably go on there pretty soon. But uh, he sent it to me when it, where it was like this, and then, if you didn't have that right there, it was a uh, it was the green and orange. Kind of looked pretty cool. I may do that too. I like to change things up a bit just to keep things fresh, keep things new. You know, putting on these new scales makes the knife feel brand new again, and uh, it's just a treat. Let me give you an up close on these scales. If I can, if my camera will do it any justice, you can see all his finishing work, all his contouring is just spot on. There's no waviness whatsoever. You can look down there. Perfectly contoured right here. I don't know if he uses a, um, a router or not. That's what I use. But, I mean, look at that. This is flawless. I can tell you right now, doing this by hand is no easy work. Ask, ask uh, Johnson Knives and ask, you know, any of the other big modifiers. This stuff takes time, takes patience, and... You know, when you're getting started out, it's okay to ruin some material, and you better have some extra because you're going to ruin some. And, you know, and look, his uh, counter sinks were done just right. Depths were perfect. As you can see right here, it's absolutely perfect. Sitting right underneath there, that's something that you can easily mess up. So if you turn right here, you don't see the, the screws. Perfectly done there. Um... And you not only have to do all your contouring right here, do your countersinks, and then do your, your, your finishing, you know. And he took this up, I'd say, pretty high and a high grip sandpaper because it's got a nice little polish to it, as you can see. Uh, and, you know, to make sure you don't have any scratches or lines, you really have to pay attention to what you're doing. And he definitely does that. He's very, very talented. Go check him out. Like I said, you, you'll be surprised. And he also, you got this, these two uh, counter boards right here that you have to put because inside this knife for this back spring, you got a rivet here. You got a rivet 
here. And if you don't do these right here, this won't sit flush to where it's sitting flat up against the scale. It'll be sitting raised and it'll look rather wonky. So I know I'm taking up 10 minutes already of y'all time. Let me know what you think. Let me know if, you know, maybe let me know if you rather the wood scales. I, you know, I'm not, maybe it's just me, but look, see, it looks like pitting. And I know that's just the natural uh, grain of the wood. And, you know, that's just, that's just how wood is. But I don't know. I'm just not a huge fan of this. Or maybe it's just, maybe I'm not a huge fan of this wood because I do like, I love me some uh, burls and some, some curly maple. I, I love those types that have a lot of, I like the light colored wood with a lot of, you know, texture in them. My, my neighbor does duck calls and man, I, he's got some beautiful calls out of some exotic woods. So there you go. That's the original. Here's the, which one do you like more? The orange, the original, or the OD green linen micarta? So there you go. Or should I do a multicolor? Should I do like he had it whenever it came to me? Should I do a green in one side and orange on the other side? Or wood on one side and orange on the other side? Wood on one side? My Carter, you get the drift, people. So, <laughs> hope everybody enjoyed this. Like I said, go check him out. You will not be disappointed. You're going to end up wanting to get something refurbished, restored, modified, customized. I promise you, I definitely have some knives that I want him to do some work on to maybe lighten them up, change the materials a lot, a little bit, and he is the guy I will go to. Hope everybody's having an absolute wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. Peace.